This is how you can make an online staff command system using your discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any other video on my channel, you can get a super or god tier subscription on YouTube, or you could get a god tier subscription on Discord. You could also get any of these three bot packages. They are fully coded Discord bot packages based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested. And with that, let's go and get into the code. All right, so to start, we're going to go over to schemas and we're just going to go and create online staff.js. Within this, we're going to go ahead and get our guild as a string, our channel as a string, and our role as a string, and just go ahead and copy this down pretty much exactly how I have it. Then we can go over to moderation. We're going to go ahead and create online staff.js. In here, we're going to get our discord.js, so we can just do that, and we're going to go ahead and define a few things. So we're going to go ahead and start off by getting our embed builder, and we're also going to get our slash command builder. So once we have both of those, we can also do const, and we're going to go ahead and get our online staff. We can do equals require. We're going to do dot dot slash. We can do dot dot slash again. We can get schema and we're going to get our online staff. So then we have our schema and we have our requirements. We can do module.exports. We're going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to set mod to true. This is a moderator only command. And I did make a video on this system to make a moderator only command. That'll be in the description below. Uh, if you don't want to watch that, just go ahead and make a permission statement. Next, we can go ahead and do data, which is going to be our new slash command builder. We're going to go ahead and set a name, which is going to be online staff. We're going to go ahead and set a description. This is going to be online staff. Nobody's going to see that, so it doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and create two sub commands. The first is going to be a setup with the description as set up your online staff system. We're going to have a channel option with the name channel and description and the channel to send online staff updates into. And we're going to set required to true on that. We're going to have a role option with the name of role, the description of the role to track online status for. We're going to set required to true on that. So after we have our first sub command, we're going to go ahead and create our second, which is going to be disable with the description as disable your online staff system. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do async execute. So we can go ahead and get our interaction and we're going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to start off by getting our options. We're going to go ahead and set that equal to our interaction. We're going to do con sub equals options to get a sub command. And we're also going to get our data. So we're going to do var data equals await online staff to find one. We're going to get our guild. That's going to be our interaction .guild .id. Next, we're going to go ahead and write our send message function. So we can do async function send message. We're going to get our message. And we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to get our embed. And that's going to be our new embed builder. Let's go ahead and set a color. And we can do blur pull. Let's also go ahead and say a description, which is going to be message. And then we can do a wait interaction or reply. We can get our embeds. We're going to set that to our embed variable. And we're also going to go ahead and set infermal to true on that to make it hidden. Now that we have our send message function and our variables, we can go ahead and switch to our sub command. And we're going to set our case to setup. So we're going to get our first sub command. We're going to say if data, we're going to open this up. We can do a wait send message. And I'm just going to go ahead and get a caution emoji. And within this, we're going to go ahead and say, it looks like you already have this system. And we can go ahead and say set up. And we can say in. We're going to go ahead and do our formats. We're going to do arrow hashtag. We can do data.channel. And we're going to go ahead and finish off that arrow. So now we're going to go ahead and say else. And we can open that up. We're going to do var channel. And we can do options that get channel. And that's going to be our channel. Then we're going to go ahead and do var role equals. And we can do options that get role. And that is going to be our role. So now that we have our channel and our role variable, variables we can go ahead and do await online staff .create, and we're going to go ahead and create our guild which is going to be our interaction .guild .id. we're going to get our channel which can be our channel.id and we're going to get our role which is going to be our role.id so now that we have all of that we should be good to do await send a message and i'm going to go ahead and get our globe emoji just like usual and we can say when someone with the role and we can go ahead and do a role and we can say has a presence change. Then we can go in and say a notification will be sent in and we can get our channel variable. So after we do that, we can come outside of that and we're just going to go ahead and break. And I'm going to go ahead and get our case, which is going to be disable. That's going to be our next sub command. In here, we're going to do if no data, we can open that up. We're going to do wait, send a message. And I'm going to go ahead and get a caution emoji. And I'm just going to go in and say it looks like you have no online staff system set up. So after we get that error, we can also go ahead and say else just like above. And we're going to do await online staff delete one and I'm going to get our guild, which can be our interaction guild ID. So after we delete that, so we're going to do await send message and I'm going to get our globe emoji and we're just going to go ahead and send a success message so we can say your online staff system has been disabled. So now we're actually done with the command portion. We've went ahead and set up a command 
uh, to manage the system as a moderator. So now let's go ahead and handle the system interaction events so that when a member's presence changes, we can send that into a channel. So to do that, we're going to go over to events and we're going to go ahead and create online staff.js. Within this, we're going to do our events and we're going to get our embed builder and then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our discord.js package. Then we're going to do const online staff equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our schema just like before. So we can do schemas, we're going to get online staff. Then we can do module.exports and we're going to get our name which is going to be events.presence update and we can do async executes we're going to go ahead and get our old status we can get our new status and we can also get our clients and we're going to go ahead and open that up so within this we're going to do if no new status dot guilds or new status dot bots we're just going to go ahead and return so then we're going to do var data equals await and we're going to do online staff and then we can do to find one and that is going to be our guild which can be our new status that guild that id and we can say if no data we can just go ahead and return we're going to say else and open that up we're going to do const m rules equals await new status dot member dot roles dot cache dot map and we're going to do role and we can do arrow function role dot id so now that we have those roles, we can do var check and we can also do await m roles and we can do dot for each. We're going to do async role. We can open that up. We're going to do if role equals data dot role. Then we can go ahead and set check equal to true. So we've gone ahead and set that system up. So now we can say if check, we're going to go ahead and do var old. We can go ahead and say if no old status, then we can go ahead and set old to offline. The reason is if there's no old status, that means we just turn the bot on and the user is offline. So we can just go ahead and set that. Uh, then we can say else and we're going to set old to old status dot status just like that. We're going to do var updated equals new status dot status. And we're also going to go ahead and say if old equals updated, then we're going to go ahead and return and do nothing. All right, so now we can go ahead and say else and let's go ahead and get the channel we want to send it in. But to do that, we have to get the guild first. So we can do var guild equals await client dot guilds dot fetch. We're going to get our data dot guild. Then we can go ahead and do var channel equals await guild dot channels dot fetch and we're going to get our data dot channel. So after we do that, we're going to do if old is not equal to and we can go ahead and do offline and we can say and we can do updated is not equal to offline. Then we can just go ahead and return. And the reason we're doing that is because um, we need one of these to be offline, meaning they're either coming online or they're going offline. Otherwise, there's no point in sending a on or offline status update because they're just changing from like online to do not disturb, for example. Then we can go ahead and say if no old. Uh, this is kind of redundant, but I'm just going to put it in. We can do old equals offline. Uh, so just in case something fails with our old variable, then we're going to do var and we can do stat message equals and we can do this staff member is now and we can do a space. Then we're going to do if old equals offline and then we can go ahead and say our stat message We can do plus equals and we can do on discord just like that. And we can say else and we can do stat msg plus equals and we can just do no longer on discord just like that. All right. So now that we're done with that, we can write our embed builder so we can do this and we're going to go ahead and start off by setting a color and I'm just going to go ahead and make that blur pull. We're going to go ahead and say a description. I'm going to go ahead and get a globe emoji and we can just go ahead and get all of the information we need. So we're going to have our bolded staff member status change. We're going to do backslash n backslash n. We can bold staff member and that's going to be our new status dot user. We can do backslash n. We're going to bold previous status and we're going to do backslash tick backslash tick. And within that, we're going to get our old variable. We're going to do an arrow and then we're going to do bolded new status and we can do backslash tick backslash tick. And inside of that, we're going to get our updated variable. And we're going to do backslash n status message. So now that we have our embed, we can just go ahead and send it. So we're going to do await and we can just go ahead and do channel that send. And we're going to get our embeds and that is going to be our embed. So that we are actually done with this entire command and system. So we can go ahead and save both of these files, restart the bot and test this out. All right. So over in the discord server, let's go ahead and test this out. So first let's just go ahead and get our online staff set up. Let's go ahead and do vids and we can just go ahead and get the moderator role. And as you can see, it's going to say, it looks like you already have this system set up. So I already have it set up from before when I was testing it. So we can just go ahead and remove it. So you can do online staff disable. So as you can see, that's working. So now let's go ahead and do online staff setup. And let's go ahead and get our vids and we can get our M and there we go. So now we have it all set up. So it should be working. I have the role um, that we set it up with and my presence is currently do not disturb. So let's just go ahead and change it to online. And as you can see, nothing happens because we went from do not disturb to online. Uh, it has to go from 
any of these three online statuses to offline or offline to any of these three online statuses for it to send a status update. So now that we're online, let's go offline, totally offline. And as you can see, it's gonna go ahead and give me a staff member status change. Uh, it's gonna be the staff member as me. And the previous status was online and the new status is offline. And it gives a status message, which is the member is no longer on Discord. So now let's go from offline to online. So we can go from invisible to maybe any of these three would work, but let's just go to idle for example. And as you can see, we're gonna get a new status member change. Um, it's going to be offline to idle. So basically how this works is you can go from offline to any of these three online statuses or any of these three online statuses to offline, but you cannot jump between either of these three. Uh, for example, if we went to do not disturb, I'm not going to get a status message because the whole point of the system is to notify Discord members when the staff member becomes online or when they go offline, and not just when they randomly change their status. Alright, so that's how you can make an advanced online staff member system using your Discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here, and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.